Hey guys, this is Thea with That Sweet Tea Life. Um, thank you for joining me here at Up Close and Painting with Thea. And we are wrapping up this Rustic Glam nightstand. Um, we have made it to the finale, the seal, the part that I think makes most of us cringe a little bit because we've already done all of the beautiful artistic work and we're just praying that we can seal it and protect it without damaging the finish or altering the finish. We don't want it to turn yellow. Um, so now is the time to get it done. I'm actually gonna be using two products. I'm gonna tell you all a couple of secrets um, because there's certain things that I don't tell a lot of people because, well, they might take it and run with it in a bad way. Um, and I never want to steer anybody wrong. But being here in this small little group with you guys, I'm gonna be super bold and honest and make sure you pay attention to everything, not just the little bits. Um, and it comes down to wax. I've told people time and time again, don't trust wax. It will wear away. Um, you could possibly have problems with it down the road if somebody puts their greasy hand on it. Um, so be careful. Like, you don't want to put that on the kitchen table, right? Um, but I love to use it. I love to use it as much as anybody else does. The thing is, you have to be careful. Think about when you're what pieces um, on this piece I feel like it's rather safe to use it on the sides um, not on the top I'm still gonna varnish the top but the sides of it I think I'm gonna go with the wax I think it's a safe choice I'm gonna give it plenty of cure time before it goes off to anybody's home um, but you know again just keep those things in mind if you think this piece is gonna be very high traffic um, use then maybe don't do it at all. Um, sometimes what I'll do is I'll do the varnish, um, give it a nice hard clear coat, and then I'll come over it with the wax. And what this does is it gives you a little bit of added protection that is similar to waxing your car. Your car has color, it has a clear coat. And then a lot of times if we really wanna take care of it and preserve that finish, we wax it. Same philosophy for our furniture. Color, seal, wax. Um, wax, if you're gonna use it, is always the last. I don't recommend using decorative wax over poly or varnish. Um, reason being is it can wear away over time and that's just going to be a pain in your booty if you ever have to try and get that look created again. Um, so what I recommend is getting the, the look that you want with glazes or color washes, things that are more permanent, um, and then subsequently coming back and sealing it and protecting it. Um, and then if you want to do a clear wax, go for it. I'm not a huge proponent for using the decorative wax. If you hear squeaking, I apologize. My sweet trinity, very sweet and pain in my booty bulldog is in here and um, I'm gonna do my best to not get distracted. So let's see, what are we gonna use? Two things. The first is on the top, I'm gonna use my Wise Owl varnish. Um, Make sure that you can see it. Once again, I'm looking at this thing backwards, so it always messes me up. Um, for the Wise Owl varnish, this is why it's my go-to. The standard polyacrylic poly um, is gonna equal one-third of this, meaning one coat of this is gonna be approximately three coats of polyacrylic. This stuff is thick. It has got amazing amounts of acrylic resin in it. Um, which is going to make it get hard as nails um, and give you an amazing um, So, less work. If you can figure out how to use this stuff, that's less for, work for you. Almost across the board, I'll do no more than two coats of this. Um, if I really need one more coat, say I got the satin finish, or I just want to do something to even it out a little bit, I'll add one more coat. I really need to. Um, but two, no more than three. Definitely no more than three. Um, that's just overkill, way too much. Um, it's made with crystal clear acrylic resin. And what this means is that it's not gonna yellow over time. Now, does that mean it can't yellow? Absolutely not. Anything can yellow if yellow is presented to it, right? You drop some yellow dye in something, it's gonna turn yellow. Um, 
So that being said, make sure that your, your piece is sealed well. Um, that way you don't have any problems with the, the wicking action that can happen and turning it yellow. But it on its own is not going to turn yellow. Um, hard as nails, isn't going to yellow. I've got a dog biting my feet. Um, it's my go-to. My go-to for the longest time was uh, polyvine varnish. Um, but my stockist stopped carrying it. She actually closed shop. So I had to find something else. Um, I was lucky enough to run into Wise Owl around the same time and I tried it out and it's amazing. Um, how do I apply it? My very, very favorite way to apply it is with my brush that disappeared. Hold on. I'll just stuck it back here. Excuse me, Trinity. This is the elusive Klingon B12. Um, now I have seen similar brushes in Lowe's and stuff. Um, so you might be able to find something that is somewhat comparable, but Klingons are just known for the very fine filaments um, and the saturated um, amounts of bristles that just make them hold so much paint, so much varnish, um, and just leave a wonderful coat. It's because it's able to load up so much then therefore lay so much that kind of gives it the ability to lay a great finish. Um, so that's why I love using it for my varnish. That said, it's my favorite. You can use whatever you're comfortable with. It's really not that big of a deal. Some people will use a sponge and over the sponge, they will put um, like a, a pantyhose uh, or something like that so that they can just wipe it across. The pantyhose causes like any debris to not get in there. Um, it also helps to keep a very clean finish. My son is done testing. That's good to know. Um, so use what you're comfortable with. Whatever your typical method for applying a top coat is, chances are you can use it here. I'm going to show you a couple of pointers that are going to make this one easier. Um, and it might be a little bit... Um, special to just this varnish, but I think you'll get a good idea of, you know, of the reasons and the whys and all that good stuff and be able to apply some of, some of the information to whatever you use as well. Um, lastly is, did I put everything back there? I've got my lemon salve. Um, now this is an econo size tub of it. They don't actually manufacture this for retail use or retail production. Um, but they usually get like an eight ounce can and it lasts forever for the typical user. I probably use it more than I should because I love the stuff. Um, so I got this huge container. Um, now this is made from hemp oil. It is yellowish in color. Um, it's not really going to yellow your whites. It is going to make them a little bit more rich. Um, I'm not personally typically worried about it. If I am worried about that, tiny smidge of yellowing that may occur, then I'll just use something that's clear or I'll use the varnish instead. It's not that big of a deal. Um, this one is the lemon verbena scent. It comes in white tea as well as lavender. They all smell very good. They also have unscented, which is the clear one, and that's actually a coconut base. Um, I love this stuff. It's super easy to use. It's softer, um, but it does have the hardening waxes in it that are going to make it cure over time really well with the piece that you're working on. Um, I've been hesitant to tell people to use it until I could do my own experimentations, but dude, it works. It works really well. Um, my favorite thing to do, though, for a finish is to use the varnish, do one to two coats of it, then, after that's dry, come across it with the lemon salve. No. Hmm. Now, what that does is it adds that extra layer of protection, like I was talking about, um, like, like as if you're waxing your car. But it also provides this really nice, beautiful sheen. Um, the, the varnish itself comes in satin or matte. I like to mix the two and get a 50-50 blend that is just a nice little sheen. Um, and that's similar to what you're going to get whenever you put the sad over it anyway. So they all work together really well for me. Um, like I said, you can use the polyvine varnish. 
Um, you can also use whatever your choice of polycrylic is. Um, a lot of them are made to not yellow and typically they won't. A couple of pointers that can help you are, don't apply it too thick. If there's any area that is starting to run or pool, that is more chances for it to wake up any sort of contaminants and that's gonna turn it yellow. Uh, so you don't want that to happen. Um, sometimes I spray it. It's beautiful when sprayed in my home right finish max. Super easy. I'm not gonna do that today because finally I've braved using the brush and it goes really fast. So for this tight, tiny little surface, um, I'm not gonna worry about using my sprayer. Um, I think that's it. I think we should go ahead and move over to actually doing the work, right? Okay. So I'm going to turn around. Do you see Trinity? Do you see her? She's rotten. She's been biting my feet the entire time. Seriously. I'm gonna have to push the table back again. I should probably put that on rollers. Okay, cool. And going to lower this guy down. So you can see a little bit better. Okay. So one thing about varnish or any kind of clear coat that you use, do not shake it. You can use a stirrer if you want to take that risk and put it in there, swirl it around mix it up that way, or what I like to do is I just, I tilt it, I spin it, I swirl it, and why is this? The reason that we do this is because we don't want the air bubbles. Whenever you shake a container, you begin creating air bubbles. Those air bubbles are going to wreak havoc on your finish and make you very angry. I'm going to open it over here, make sure it don't Drop any funkiness on there. Pour it into a separate plate, styrofoam plate, regular plate, dish, whatever you want to use. Pour it into something else. That way you never risk placing your, sorry, placing your um, brush into the container, contaminating it. I should really turn off my phone. Good grief. It is so quiet until I go live with you guys. They're going to have to wait though, Gagnabbit. Do you see how thick that is? It's very thick. Okay. And so here is part of the trick. Part of the trick is going in one line and then whenever you come with the next bit, meeting up with that line without going over it. Once you go over it again, you risk it already starting to dry and settle, um, and then it's going to leave a haze. You can see that roughness over the top. It's going to drag. Um, this stuff is incredibly self-leveling, so you need to resist the urge of going over it more than you need to. So, our brush is nice and dry. Surface is nice and clean. Right? I get nervous. I get very nervous. This is what I usually do, like one of those little dances. Okay, so I'm gonna put my brush in here. Get it loaded up pretty decently. Now we don't need to submerge our brush halfway up with this stuff. That's not necessary. But I'm gonna lay it on there. And to the best of my ability, I'm gonna follow all of the instructions that I just gave you. Right? Right. Okay, so. Wet, wet, wet. And I know I'm going back over it, but I know that my brush is still plenty wet from it. Okay. So that's a good line. Now let's do it again. Meet up with that line, come across, and do it again. Good. Now probably just one more line. Hope that I don't have any mess ups right there. And see, another thing about doing the 
salve over this is right here, I may have a small issue. See, I'm not going to correct it, where it may not come together all the way. But if I use the salve over it, it really helps to kind of seal up those little areas and make your little imperfections perfected. Now I'm just bringing it around. Good. I'm going to bring it around again. Try not to go over the top edge and interrupt that. Like I said, this is self-leveling. So if you want to correct a little gloppity glop, try not to. Chances are it's going to level itself out. I have a significant one right here. I feel like that's going to end up dripping though, so let's smooth that out. I have some glops right here, but I'm going to trust those guys to do their thing and level out. And that is it. Now this is the satin, so there is going to be a bit of a sheen for this one. Something else is with the satin, it tends to be more forgiving. Um, See if I can get that little piece of something that I just dropped. I'm going to leave it alone. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Resist. Okay. So for this guy, the surface and these little edges are getting the varnish. I'm only doing one coat. It's a good thick coat. I don't think I'm going to have any problems with it. Um, so that's enough. I don't feel like I need to do any more. Sometimes I'll add the second coat just for the benefit of a good... Um, a good sheen, a consistent sheen. This time, I don't think that's going to be needed. So I'm going to move on to the rest of it. Very, very, very carefully. Right? Right. Give me one second, and I'll pull you up. And I'm going to show you the set. Trinity is going to watch us. <laughs> She's funny, guys. She's really funny. Okay, so let's come back up here. Here we have one side of our piece. This is completely painted. It's got the wash over it. Um, the conditions today are good enough, but I, and I've already tested it to make sure, um, I'm not going to have any problems with going ahead and stabbing, even though I painted today. Um, they're also, the layers are so thin that I really just don't have to worry about that. So today, we get to just move on ahead. I am going to use my very favorite natural bristle brush. Um, I'll drop this in the link up there. I've never come across a better brush, a natural one. Um, and this thing is only like 13 bucks. You honestly, you can't beat that. Like there's, it's better than any brush I've ever used and it's the cheapest. So I don't know how that happens, but I will tell everybody about it because I think it's amazing. I'm actually trying to get Wise Owl to pick these guys up as their brushes because you can't beat it. You can't beat it with a brush. I'm gonna open up my cam. And Trinity is just watching me very intently. Now I'm going to grab a plate. Because once again, we don't want any contamination. Um, we want our, our salve, our waxes, our varnish, our paint. Really, we want it to stay as pure as possible. Especially whenever they come in huge containers that you just are going to use over and over again. Um, there. Got my salve. I'm gonna kind of carve out a little bit. Now this stuff is relatively soft. It's not gonna be like a lot of the waxes that you used. So I'm just gonna take a dollop and put it right there. Like I told you, it's made of hemp oil, so it's gonna have that yellowish, greenish hue to it. Don't let that freak you out, especially for these darker pieces. 
I prefer it because it, it ends up um, creating a more saturated color. So it doesn't bug me at all. Um, and like I said earlier, I, I might hesitate using it on white, but to be honest, I probably won't. It, I mean, I'm not gonna like lather the stuff on there. It's gonna go into it and it's gonna, it's gonna absorb. It'll make it a little more rich, uh, maybe a little bit less crisp, but I'm okay with it. I don't, I don't mind. Um, I'm gonna take my brush and you could use your favorite rag. Um, some people do the wet sanding um, with the salve and their sandpaper. I've done that sometimes. Um, for right now, yep, we're using the brush. I'm gonna apply it with the brush and then we will wipe away. So I'm taking it, I'm basically, basically pushing it up in there. Crevices. That's the only thing I don't like about the brush is sometimes that becomes a little bit of pain. And this is all we're doing. We are making the surface moist. Do you see the difference? Dry, sap, dry, sap. Um, that's all we're doing. There should not be a whole heck of a buildup of film on top of this. Uh, we just want to moisten it. So we're basically Tab is on there and work it until it can't be worked. See, this is staying rather dry. Now I need to get some more. If you want to compare this to the Annie Sloan Wax, um, Annie Sloan Wax has solvents inside of it. And what that does is it causes it to harden as you go. Um, what it can then do is begin to kind of build on top of itself. And that's when you're going to come up with some of the gloppy buildups that you're going to get with the wax. Um, you're not going to experience that with this. This is literally going to soak into it. It'll sit on top of it and still be movable um, as long as you allow it to. If you allow excess to be on there, excess will sit there and hang out um, until you wipe it away. So, but what you want to do is to really just kind of work it in, moisten it, and pull it through. And then just continue to work. I love, love, love how rich it makes the colors. It just takes them to a whole new level. Mm -hmm. And at least with the lemon pads, it smells so stinking good. Love the way it smells. And so basically all I'm going to do is um, I'm going to work from side to side. By the time I'm done with one side and going to the next and finishing the whole thing, then I'm going to come back and begin like just wiping away any excess that there is. Going to bring out some of the wood tones. I don't know if you can see that too much over right there. Um, so wherever you did the distressing, it's going to bring out some of those wood tones. It's just going to make all of the colors a little bit more vibrant and make them pop. Even the black in the color wash, it's going to make it all pop a little bit more. Because we're wanting to chew on my Windsor back chairs. There's not a whole lot around here that I just love. But those chairs, I kind of do. I wish to work on them. So I keep having to check on her. Mm, see, I love this area. It brings out that wood tone, the deep turquoise, the anchor on top of it. She's very pretty. Right. Here, bring that leg. 
So I make sure that we have hit on everything that we're able to see. No. No. See? She's chewing my chair. And see, by, by looking into the glare, I can see just how much movability there is on the surface. And I can see a little bit of excess. It's fine. I'm going to let it sit here and soak in. I try not to touch that lip because that's where the varnish is sitting. So I'm going to leave it alone. And by the magic of TV, or me actually thinking ahead a little bit, we have a front that has already been sapped. So actually, if we turn it back on this way, you remember, uh, you could see much more of the actual literal colors instead of just the glare. Glare, yeah, um, glare. So I know how that is. Um, but there you go. You can see how all of the colors just really become that much more rich and they pop. Um, now I can take my soft cloth. I use the microfiber cloths a lot. Um, they do well for me. Um, you can also use the shop towels. Those work well. Um, so like the ones that you know come in the in the box or the blue ones or whatever. And I'm going to continue to just buff this guy out and get any of the excess oil taken care of. Piece of lint right there that I'm going to pull away. Over here, and just I did go ahead and take care of this. And see, the staff can also be used to just refresh all of the wood and make it beautiful again. And so that's what I did to the inside here. It can be used to put on the underside of the drawers um, and in here, like just to make everything move a little bit smoother. Um, and if you didn't notice, I added the hardware back. So there you go. There you have it, all finished. And I will be staging and taking photographs soon. So I hope you guys have enjoyed it. Um, I hope you learned a little something. Please, as you're going, make sure, regardless of if you're watching on replay or whatever, or when it is, ask any questions that you have. Um, let me know if there's anything, I don't know, not going your way, or you're getting stumped on, or whatever. I'm happy to help. That's really pretty right there. Um, just drop it down in the comments, and I'll be happy to get back to you. If you have a whole other post that you would like to make, um, say it doesn't really fall in the lines of anything that I've talked about already, make a post. Post some pictures. Give us an idea of what you're looking at and what you need help with, and uh, we'll be here to help you. So, all right, guys. I will talk to you guys later and um, give you the finished staged photographs. Talk soon. Bye.